Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. The topic that we are going to see today is sorting. Now there can be different types of sorting like heap sort, insertion sort, merge sort and many others. Today we are going to focus on bubble sorting. Now in this bubble sort, as the name suggests, we are going to sort our data elements in an increasing or decreasing manner. But the main principle that bubble sort dictates is that in bubble sort we have to compare the adjacent two elements and we have to swap the position of these elements if they are found to be unordered so the array or the uh, array element that we have been given here it stores some data elements but they are in an unordered fashion right now let us look, uh, take a look at the array that we are given this array that is given here it is unordered so if we want to sort it in an increasing order by using the technique that is told in bubble sort what do we have to do let us take a look at it so the state of the array that we have now is 13 14 5 7 and 3 so this is basically a integer array and it is given in an unordered fashion right it is not sorted so if you want to sort it using the technique that is used in bubble sort what do we need to do first firstly as you can see here we need to compare the adjacent elements okay we will be starting from the beginning this is the beginning right this is the zeroth, zeroth position of the array so we will be starting from here and we will start comparing with its adjacent element right so if we compare with its adjacent element we can swap the elements if they're unordered but since they are in an ordered manner see see 13 is obviously smaller than 14 it's not greater so no swap is required here okay so the state of our array will be 13, 14, 5, 7 and 3 after this uh, first step right. Then we will move our position one more and then we will compare the adjacent positions of uh, the adjacent elements in the next position that is 14 and 5 okay. But here 14 is obviously greater than 5 so a change is required here right. So we are comparing 14 and 5 then we if we see that if they are unordered then we are swapping them. So here since 14 is greater than 5 a swap is necessary. That is why we are going to swap the positions of 14 and 5. So 5 will come here 14 will go there and then we have 7, 3 okay. Afterwards we will move one step more and then we will compare the adjacent two elements after moving our position right. So we will now be comparing 14 and 7 okay now here 14 is also greater than 7 so since this is unordered we have to swap them okay so after swapping them what we will get is 13 5 7 and 14 is swapped then 3 right so then we will uh, finally reach the end of our array and we will compare the last two elements right so 14 here is obviously greater than 3 so we will exchange 14 with 3 the position of them will be exchanged so now the final array state will be 13 5 7 3 and 14 right so this is the first step in our bubble sort right this is this can also be known as step or iteration 1 right iteration is basically step so they, they hold the same meaning so this is our first step in this bubble sort but still we can see this array is not sorted right so in order to sort it we will again start from the beginning of the array now the state of our array is 13 5 7 3 and 14 and when again we will compare the first two elements okay and so on we will go like this okay so 13 is obviously greater than 5 so the swap is necessary here so we will swap their places so now it will be 5 13 7 3 and 14 right then we will uh, compare the next two elements and here we again find that 13 is greater than 7 so the swap will take place and it will be 5 7 and 13 are changing their positions so 7 has gone to the position of 13 right since this swap was done again we will uh, take the next two elements 13 and 3 and compare it since 13 is indeed greater than 3 so again swap is necessary so we will be swapping their positions 
and the final state of our array will be 5, 7, 13, uh, th sorry, 3, 13 and 14, right? So, again we will be checking for the next two elements and now since 13 is not greater than 14, no swap will take place. So, now our array will be 5, 7, 3, 13 and 14, okay? So, this can be known as our uh, step or iteration 2, right? So, step slash iteration 2, okay? So, let's move forward. We can again see that this, this array, the state of uh, our array in the uh, last phase of iteration 2 is not sorted, right? So, again, we will start with the basic principle of bubble sort from the beginning of this array. So now the state of our array is 5, 7, 3, 13 and 14, right? So it is 5, 7, 3, 13 and 14, okay? So again, we'll start comparing from the beginning of the two elements. We see 5 and 7, uh, they are ordered, right? 5 is not greater than 7, so no change is necessary here. So it will be 5, 7, 13 and 14. Then we will move on to the next adjacent elements and we see that 7 is greater than 3. So this swap is necessary here, right? So it will be 5, 3 and 7 will be exchanging their positions, okay? Now we will move on to the next adjacent element, 7 and 13, okay? And here we can see that 7 and 13 are in their ordered manner, right? 7 is not greater than 13, so no swapping needs to take place. So it will be 5, 7, 5, 3, 7, 13 and 14, okay? Then we'll again compare the last two adjacent elements and we see no swap is necessary there since 13 is not greater than 14. So the final state of our array will be like this, 5, 3, 7, 13 and 14, okay? So this step will be known as our step or iteration 4. Okay, so since even now the array is not sorted, we'll again start uh, swapping and comparing our values from the beginning of our uh, adjusted array, right? So now our state of the array is 5, 3, 7, 13 and 14, okay? So we'll again take the first two elements and compare them. We see that uh, swap is necessary since 5 is greater than 3, okay? So we'll uh, we'll change the position and it will be 3, 5, 7, 13, 14, right? Again, we will move on to the next two adjacent elements and see that no change is necessary. So it will be, it will remain as it was 3, 5, 7, 13 and 14. Since 5 is not greater than 7, so no swapping is required. Similarly, 7 and 13, no uh, changes uh, or swapping is required. So this will be 3, 5, 7, 13 and 14 and again for the last two adjacent elements no swap swapping is required so the array will remain as it was 3, 5, 7, 13 and 14 right so we can see here in our step or iteration 4 that we have achieved a sorted array right the array at the end of our, our step 4 is sorted so the sorted array looks somewhat like this 3, 5, 7, 13, and 14. See, so this is sorted in an increasing manner, right? It is sorted in an increasing manner. So using bubble sort, we can do this, we can achieve this. Now, if we want to have a look at how our code will be constructed as, we need to know two things. Right? So the two things that we need to know are the number of steps or iterations, okay? And the number of comparisons in each step. So we need to know what is the number of steps or iteration that we will be requiring so that our array, given array, is sorted. So here in this example that I have shown to you, the number of steps required was 4, right, in order to sort this. Now how can we determine this value, okay? So as you can see, the size of the array that was already given is n equals to 5. So our number of steps will be n minus 1, okay? And again, the number of comparisons that we are doing in each step is, see, we are doing one, this is the blue one. So we are doing one, two, three, and four comparisons, right? 
so since we are taking two elements each time we are doing a total of four comparisons so how are we getting this four again we are getting this four from our n minus one times right so this number of steps will be our outer loop and this number of comparisons will be in our inner loop okay now look, let us look at what the code will look like since we have already told the number of comparisons and the number of steps that are required is n minus 1 so in the outer loop our limit will be since i is initialized to 0 our limit will be i less than n minus 1 so it is for the number of steps right and for our inner loop the limit for j will be since it's initialized to j equals to 0 so the limit will be n minus 1 okay afterwards we will introduce a condition this condition will determine if the swap will take place or not right so here we can see if aj is greater than aj plus 1 meaning if the current element is greater than the next element then we need to swap this element right so we will be introducing a temporary variable here and storing the value of the next element in the temp variable okay and we will be updating the value of the next element and storing the value of the previous element into the next uh, the current element into the next element right so the value that was in aj will now be stored in aj plus one okay now previously we have stored uh, we have introduced a temporary variable and stored the next uh, value of the next element now this uh, this value will be stored in the current element aj so as you can see the a swap has been occurred a swap has occurred here okay so in this way in this manner we will be sorting our array okay now one more thing that you can see here is that you can optimize this bubble sort to some extent okay so let us have a look here here we can see that when uh, say let's say i equals to 0 here i equals to 1 i equals to 2 and i equals to 3 okay so when i equals to 0 all of the comparisons was necessary right in order to swap this but when i was 0 here we can see that the largest element of the array came to the bottom uh, came to the last position right okay now when we move to i equals to 1 we can see that all of the comparisons was done but this comparison 13 and 14 was unnecessary so we don't require this comparison right this comparison was not needed since 13 and 14 they are already uh, in their right positions and this came from this iteration right here you know why because 14 was the largest element in our array since if this was the largest element in step 2 we don't have to consider this largest element again so when i is equals to 1 we don't have to consider this comparison okay since already we have gotten we have sorted our last position from this step one okay so when step uh, when we have uh, iteration two when we have step uh, sorry we, when we this should be three step three sorry so when we are in i equals to two that is our step three we did not need to compare or we did not need to see this uh, swapping elements for the last two elements right since 13 and 14 are the largest element here and we have already achieved this from step 2 so when i equals to 2 we don't need this and this comparison okay since 13 and 14 are in their rightful positions we don't need these two comparisons we only need this two okay so as you can see according to the value of i we can change the number of comparisons okay so in each step if we can control the number of comparisons if we are not uh, using this comparisons so our bubble sort will be optimized to some extent right so how can we introduce the change here so in our inner loop which is uh, controlling our number of comparisons if we introduce minus i okay that will optimize our bubble sort now what this minus i will do see when initially i is equals to 0 it will check all the comparisons n minus 1 comparisons here right here is n minus 1 that is 4 n is 5 5 minus 1 4 so it will be checking for 1 2 3 4 comparisons okay so when we see i is equals to 1 then what happens in n minus 
n minus 1 minus i that is 5 minus 1 minus 1 that is equals to 3. So we will be checking three comparisons here, right? Three comparisons. So the three comparisons are 1, 2, 3. So we don't need this since 14 has is already in its rightful position from step 1. Okay. And similarly, when i is equals to 2, we will be getting n minus 1 minus 2 that is 5 minus 1 minus 2 which is equals to 2 right so we will be only checking two comparisons here okay the so two comparisons are being checked here you see 1 2 and these two comparisons need not be checked because 13 and 14 are already in their rightful positions so in this way you can optimize your bubble sort to some extent so hopefully this will be uh, this is all for your bubble sort algorithm uh, hopefully it's clear to you if you have any problem then you can ask me later in the class